With everything that's going on in this world, we are truly living in the last days. We can truly see we're living in the last days. But I have a question for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? If he called your name today, would you be ready to go?
Praise the Lord.
down deep in my soul down deep in my soul down deep in my soul have you given me joy down deep in my soul down deep in my soul Anybody got joy in the house today? Has anybody got joy in the house today? Joy like no other 
to fill it's our hearts this empty space is what you wanted all along it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts this empty space is what you wanted all along help me say it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts this empty space is what you wanted all along it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts this empty space is what you wanted all along oh it's not a building lord it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts oh this empty space is what you wanted all along sing this sing it's what you will you want to fill it's our hearts it's our hearts lord empty space it's empty space it's what you wanted all along oh it's not a building yeah it's not a building you want to fill it's our it's our hearts What you wanted all along. Oh, it's what you wanted all along. 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 It's what you wanted, Lord. It's what you wanted all along. It's what you wanted all along. It's what you wanted all along. Lord, you want my heart, yeah. It's what you wanted all along. It's not a building you want to fill, it's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along. Oh, Lord, yes, it's not a building you want to fill, it's my heart. This empty space is what you wanted all along.
your glory in I'm open I'm open come again let your glory in I'm in the building open today I'm open. is anyone's hearts open unto the Lord today Come again. make this your prayer today Let your glory you want it all along yeah. it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts this it's empty space is what you want it all along it's not a building you want to fill it's our hearts this empty space is what you wanted all along. So I'll wait for you to come. I'll wait for you to come. When I'm with you, Lord, it always leaves me wanting yeah. Yeah. That's right. so here's my praise you can dwell with me come again come again let your glory in I'm open are you open? singing this song. Come again. Whether well, you're actually opening up your heart and say, God, your glory in. clean me I'm of everything. Open. I just want more of you, Father. I'm open. Are you really open? I'm open. And this is just a building. I'm open. God is after your heart. I'm it's a open. heart matter. It's not a building matter. It's not a church matter. It's your heart matter. I'm open. I'm open. You have to open up your heart. You have to say this to Jesus. You have to say to God. God. He sent his son for us. But now you're going to ask him. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna basically say, God, I am open.
we're coming back until we get it right. We've got to get it right. He's coming back. He's coming back for a church with no spot or wrinkle. But we're all wrinkled up. We're going to get cleaned up. So here's my praise, you can dwell. Come again, come again, let your glory in, I'm open, I'm open, come again. Let your glory in, I'm open, I'm open, come 
I believe that um, we have created an atmosphere for God to come in this house and that somebody has been ministered to. I believe that needs have already been met through the praise and worship because our heart attitude is right. We don't ever want to rush the Holy Spirit. We don't ever want to rush. We ask Him to come. We just, God, we just want you to come into this place, you know, just right now. We, we thank you, God, that you, we've created an atmosphere. We've changed the atmosphere that you might come and dwell with us in this house. Needs are being met right now. Healing is being met right now. It's being manifested in this house right now. Somebody's going to walk out here different than the way they came in. There's been a change. We have to believe it to receive it. His word says in Mark 11, 24, that whatsoever thing that we desire that when we pray to believe it. We just want to come to. We just want to come to church and play church. We want God to come into our hearts because it is a heart condition. More of Him, less of anything that does not belong to Him. Because if we are the living temple of God, if God's living temple is, is if it's rain, He's reigning in us, then nothing that is not of God should be there. Holy Spirit. Somebody in the house, just say hallelujah. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.
destroys every bondage. Bondage of lack, guilt, sickness, pain, fear. We don't have fear. But rather power of love and a sound mind and the anointing of God. allows us to rise up and take our rightful place in the kingdom of God and say that we are a peculiar person, royal, we're royal, and we're not even of this place. We are ambassadors from heaven. Father, we give you praise today. We worship you, God. And we come, God, we come here into this house. We come expecting, Lord God, to receive. But, Father, more than that, we even come to bring our supply of the Spirit with our brothers and sisters. Father, because like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house. So we thank you today, Father God, for all of our blessings that you've already stored upon us. We thank you, Father God, that our needs have been met. We thank you, God, that we are blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Father, that we are above only and not beneath. We are blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. We are not that. We, Father, we are head only and not the tail. We know, Lord God, that, all our, that everything, God, that you have already given us is already here right now because your word says in Ephesians 1.3 that you've given us all things. Everything we came in the life and godliness is up to us, Lord God, to possess it. So we reach up right now, God, into the apples and say, I have it all. You said that it was ours, God, so I have it all. It's mine. And I claim it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship. You guys are awesome today. Pastor was speaking last week, and uh, he had said um, that he'd love to have an opportunity for my sister Bob, Bob Ann, my sister Bob Ann, and her husband Sanji from Baltimore, Maryland, to come and share with us a bit. They've uh, they've been here for quite a while, and we're so thankful that they opened up the borders, and you guys had an opportunity to join us for every service since you've been home. So we, we, we welcome you back every time. I know, I know Sanjay, uh, Brother Sanjay, that you, you teach um, in uh, Maryland, and we definitely would uh, like that the next time you come here, you're coming here prepared to bring us a message. So. But for right now, we'd like if you guys would both come we have already sanitized the microphones. They're ready for you. If you would come and just um, share us a bit with your words of encouragement, words of kindness, your words of wisdom.
Okay, praise the Lord. Lord. Now I feel much better. (laughs) I was really overwhelmed this morning when I walked in because I knew I'm a little choked up because I'm trying to hold it together. I knew that anytime you meet friends and family and loved ones and you have to leave and say goodbye, that it could be the last time. We know the type of world that we're living in. Life is short. COVID came. People got up, went to work, the next day got sick and didn't get to say goodbye to their family. Life happens. You could drive down the road in the car. You could be gone. Life happens. This is not a, a doom and gloom message that I'm giving or witness. I'm, I just want you to know that we have to always be ready to say goodbye, but to be ready to go on to meet the Lord. Amen. So Amen. goodbye on this earth is goodbye. I love you, but I'll see you all soon. I'm just saying that to say that when we leave, we leave, but we will be back. But in our hearts, we don't know when God's calling any of us home, right? Just be ready. The song he sang, are you ready? Just be ready so we can always be happy when we leave because even if we don't come right back in this flesh, we're always ready. So I just love God. I love this church so much because I have to tell you, the minute you walk in the door, you greet it with love. I'm free when, I'm, when I come here. I can Amen. worship the Lord with my heart. I can open up my spirit. I can praise. I can worship. I don't care who's listening or who's not Amen. listening. It's between me and the Lord. I want to give God praise. I want to give him honor and glory for the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank him for his mercy, for his grace, and his loving kindness. But I do have to mention this witness. Last week, my husband and my mom, we were talking about being able and ready to speak to to the Lord or for the Lord at any moment. We were saying you'd like to be prepared when you're asked to teach or preach. But if you're called to be a witness for God as a Christian, you got to be able to stand at any given time or moment to give an opportunity to witness to the Lord, no matter what situation or no matter who the audience or the crowd, no matter how you have to flower up your words, be real, be who God created you to be. So he did give me a a piece of scripture to give you today, and it's a very simple scripture. But that scripture helped me so much in my life. I have my son here with me today, who's a living testimony of what God can do for me. We've had an accident that was surreal to this world. He was inside my body when I had a horrible fall. I fell down 18 steps, rolled over. When I rolled over, the baby was still inside me for 23 days later. We both could have been gone that minute, but God had other plans for us. I also, my other son was on the steps when we rolled down. I rolled over him. So three of us could have been gone, but God had plans. So I'm going to tell you this. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Psalms 119, verse 145. That verse came to me when I needed God the most. It comes to me when, I'm, when I have fear in my life. All I have to do is realize that great peace. God gives fear. We know what loss means. We know what it means to lose somebody. We know what it means to lose something. We know what it means to lose a job. We know what it means to lose a loved one. For relationships, we know what it means when they're gone, when they're soured, when they're not coming back. We know what it means when you're trying to pull your family together and keep your family together. You do have moments where you don't have the peace. But trust God's word. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend you. So if you have the word of God within you, you have the peace of God within you. That peace goes with you wherever you go, through the good times and the bad times, because there will be bad times. But remember, there is a God. Remember his word. His word is real. His word lives within us. That gives us peace. Just know, you're looking for that job. You have bills to pay. Your loved ones are having problems at home. You're having problems at work. You're having problems in your family. Peace. Think about it. Whenever you get that moment, just just say these words. When you get that moment, peace. Let the peace come over you. Let the word of God come up. Let the peace come over you. We know times will be hard. Always be hard. The second part of that verse says, nothing shall offend them. You can have so much peace in your life and still feel offended by what is people, by losing your job, um, battles you have to fight every single day. 
A lot of people are fighting demons. We all have to fight something in our lives. And that will come to take away your peace and your joy. Not if you got God's word in you. He said, nothing shall offend you. Not fire, not water, not famine, not fighting. Nothing shall offend you, which means you shall have what God said you're going to have. Nothing's going to be in your way. Great peace have they that love thy law. Peace. The verse Carlos said tonight, it's yours. That peace is of God, and if you want it, you can have it. But it got to start in here, and you got to get into here. You put it in your heart, and then you're living it. The rest is just like you put your clothes on in the morning. You've got the word of God on you. You eat your food, and a lot of us like to eat while we got God's word within us. And keep it there, because there will be times that we all will have struggle. There will be times when we feel our, that there's nothing else left for us in this world, that, that we don't want to hold on. Peace. Just say the word peace, great peace have they that love thy law. And nothing, nothing on this earth, nothing below us, not even in heaven shall offend us because we got God. Nothing at all, amen? Nothing shall offend them. So I just want to thank you guys again because leaving is so sad, but coming back is even greater. When this COVID hit, my husband can tell you, I was a fit to be tied because I couldn't get home for 18 months to see my mother. I kept saying, she's 87. She's eight, I got to get home to see her just because I wanted to feel her. I wanted to touch my mother because she's, I just wanted to be, COVID was here, but I wanted to be with my mom. And I was, every day, my husband's online looking, okay, next week, okay, there's a meeting, okay, this. I said, Sanji, we're going. He said, July 5th, we will be in Nova Scotia. And that, before the borders were even open, he was saying, we will be uh, July 15th, we will be in Nova Scotia. The July 15th, when the borders opened, we were in Nova Scotia. <laughs> so I'm just going to say that God is good. His mercy endures forever. Amen. His word never fails. It always accomplishes. Always. Always. It always, always accomplishes what it's set out to do. If God said so, it's going to happen. If it's, if it's in his word, it's going to happen. And if you've got a smile on your face and you know that it's going to happen because God said so, it's going to happen. So keep it in your hearts. It's going to happen because God said so. Take his word for what it says. Don't try to take away from it. Don't try to add to it. Just take it for what it says. It's going to happen. He gave me peace. So many times in my life that I needed peace in my life, I got it from God. Amen. I was able to walk through storms and smile. Amen. I've seen people saying to me, how come you're smiling when I was in situations? Well, I got God. Like, why won't I smile? I can't do anything about something. We can't change people. We can't change nothing in this earth. Nothing. We can't change it unless you're using, you know, chemicals or you're using aesthetics. We can't change who we are. Only God can do that. So how can I change the situation? That belongs to God. The only way I can change it is if God changes it for me. It. And he has to help me make it right. And that's what we want to do now. We want to make things right in our life. Yes. We want to get close to God yes. and stay close to God because that's where there's health. That's where there's healing. But most of all, that's where there's love. Like, I love to be around God's people. I'd rather be around God's people and happy than with a big crowd and not happy. You can be alone in a huge crowd. Yeah. And in a small crowd, you can have so much love. Amen. So just be content with who you are in the Lord, who God created you to be. Be content with your own self-worth and be a witness to somebody else. Always be able to give back to somebody, whether it's from your heart or whether you have something to give them. You got to give, give. You will get it back, whether it's a blessing or whether it's financial or whether it's just love. God never fails. He's a good God. He's a just God, and his mercy endures forever. Thank you. It's not too much that I need to add to that testimony. But just that the, um, of all the times that I've traveled here, been here to visit family, this has been the most, most memorable and most unforgivable. 
reason being because, as you know, the, the situation that, that we find ourselves in, being separated from family for 16 months because of a situation that had come into our lives that had never come into this world before, other than the, the, the flu of, of 1917. A situation where everything shut down. Schools. People couldn't go to work. Shopping centers. And yes, people couldn't get, could come to worship. Who would have ever thought in 2019 that the most valuable thing that we would, would, would be able to uh, appreciate would be the electronic medium by which we would be able to have worship, or at least have a word from God, do Facebook, do uh, YouTube. That's what 2020 brought us, a change, something that God may not institute it himself, but he allowed. And one thing I know I've learned in my life is that God doesn't waste a crisis. He does things for a reason. And the Lord knew the situation that we were in. During that time, during 2020, God said, I'm going to, I need a reset. So he set the reset button and says, I'm going to shut some things down now. Because a change needs to take place, not just in society itself, not just in the government, but in his people, in our hearts. We're able to really understand truly what worship is. Even though you weren't in this building, worship is, it's, it's God inside you. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's through his word. You know, your word is like a mirror. When you get up this morning, all of us, we went into the bathroom, we went into the mirror, and we checked ourselves out, make sure that we got all the sleep out of our eyes and, and everything was in order and our hair was right. But when we get up in the morning, uh, some people don't even check out themselves in terms of who they are in Christ because the word is like a mirror. And through his word, okay, when we deliver his word, we're able to, to, to see for ourselves before we go out into the world whether there's envy in us, whether there's greed in us, whether there's jealousy in us, you know, where there's pride in us. That's what the word does. It, it shows us who we are and it, it allows us to through the power of the Holy Spirit, correct those things that need to be corrected because the Holy Spirit gives us the power to say yes to the things we ought to say yes to and no to the things we ought to say no to because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot please God. When we become saved, we are dwelled with the Holy Spirit, but it's through his prayer, word, and his worship that the Holy Spirit can come, come to us and when we, when we yield to the Holy Spirit, he allows us to accomplish his intended purpose in our lives. So during this COVID period, that was something that God was trying to get us to do. But I just thank God that he allowed Barbara and I to come back home. We've been here for 43 days. And see that Word of Life Ministries is still functioning, still alive. And God has a marvelous plan for this work for this ministry. Amen. I just want to just add that when Barb mentioned that there's a scripture that, that comes to her mind that, that really guides her through in certain situations, mine also comes from the book of Psalms. And that's Psalm 1. The first book of Psalms, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But what? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. It means his word. His delight is in his, in his word. 
And in that law, in his word, does he meditate, what? Day and night. And he should be what? He shall be like a tree. You know, a tree planted by rivers of waters. A tree that's strong, has good roots. That bring forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaf, I mean, his fruit shall not wither. But whatever he doeth shall what? Prosper. But a lot of us say, well, but there are a lot of people around here doing, you know, seem to be getting away with a lot of stuff. But, Psalm, Psalm, but the psalm says, but the ungodly are not so. Or like the shaft with the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly stand not stand in the judgment. Which means that when, when the Lord comes back, they're not going to be, be in the presence of God. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Because the Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So if we don't get nothing out of this past pandemic, what we've gone through, and we all should have learned something. We all should have changed. It should have changed us in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Is that God is still on the throne. And that he wants us to change, he wants us to a relation, a inter, not just know him, but an intimate relationship. Just like a man knows his wife, he wants... God through the church to know him, an intimate relationship with him. So JJ may know who he is. Amen. So I just thank God that Barbara and I were able to come in and have the uh, reunite with family again. And, and it's only through the power of God, God, that we were able Amen. to be here. So I love you all. We thank you again for your hospitality and for your love. Continue to pray for us as we go back home because we all still got struggles. We all still got things that we got to deal with. But we know that God is able and his mercies endure forever. Thank you. Hallelujah. There was a note up here. <laughs> and um, the note says, what song are you going to sing? <laughs> See, she took that note and turned it <laughs> over. So I'm not going to call her to sing because she saw the note. It's her, it's her thing. Um, if you want to sing, just say, I'll sing, but I'm not going to take it any further than that. We're going to go move on with the service. We do thank you so, guys, so very much, guys. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for those kind words. We appreciate you. Thank you every time you come home. God bless you very much. I also would like to bring notice to my other sister who is here in the sanctuary from Brantford, Ontario. It's my baby sister. Most of you call her Maxine. I call her something else. <laughs> I won't even say with that right now. But uh, that's my baby sister. Welcome. Um, I know that there is a, uh, another first-time visitor in our house, and I think Pastor Dewey will address that when he comes. But uh, are there any other first-time visitors? Don't want to miss anybody. No other first-time visitors? No? Um, we have... Um, one other thing before we go on with our service today, which is continue to be a part of our service. But we have a young man in the sanctuary that has been diligently seeking a craft that um, he's been just banging away at hard, literally. And, uh, you know, we've been putting time in. So he, he hasn't had an opportunity to hear the show. So we're going to bring him up right now and give you all an opportunity to hear this young man. I believe he's 11 years old, 10, 9, wow, he's 9 years old and he 
He also, when he, grad when he graded this year, he had the, um, the best mark in, he's in, what grade is he in? Grade four, but he had the best mark for grade five. <laughs> no, the best, best mark for grade six. Wow, come on up here, young man. I present to you on drums, Mr. Cairo.
Hallelujah. Well, oh, bless the Lord, everybody. Let's give the Lord a hand clap praise. Bless the Lord. Well, you know, we've been blessed here in the house. Um, first, before I go any further, um, um, I'm going to ask you that uh, we are members in the house. If you could just stand and give a first time welcome to Brother Charlie here uh, from Ontario. You are welcome in the house. God bless you. Uh, we pray God's grace and mercy over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, and, uh, and you may be seated. And before I go any further, there's somebody else in the house that imp has been impactful to the house. Um, she's a sister in the Lord to us, and I believe God lent, has lent her to us. She's been here for a while, and, you know, it was really interesting because I remember she came when we were just doing our last Bible school class, and she came in, she sat in on the class, she did her assignment. Um, I, didn't get your, um, I didn't get your essay, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to ask you, could you just come up for a moment? Because I want you to stretch your hands out. We're going to pray over Sister Hilda. Yeah. We're going to pray over her. And I'm going to ask her again, too, before I preach. I want her to, uh, if I could get a mic, I want to get her to just bring some kind remarks um, before we start. Uh, yes, if I could get a mic for her as well, please. Could you just stretch your hands out, please, everybody? And first, I want to say this. I want to say and let you know that we're very thankful to God for your being here. And every time when you come home, you bring your supply of the Spirit, your support, and your encouragement. Uh, I thank God that your, your level of faith, that you are relentless after the things of God. You are fearless to God. And we appreciate you and we honor you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O oh God, for our sister. We pray, O oh Lord, your blessing on her life. We know, O oh Lord, that she's going to be leaving soon, but we pray, Father, that she comes back again. So, Father, we thank you. We honor her. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. And, uh, yeah, just take a moment and just, just give some, some remarks. Now, mm -hmm. I, I also want to say, I thought I had her for another week because I was going to have her do midweek service. But I just found out that you're leaving actually on Wednesday morning. I don't know if we can get that flight change, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so if you could take a moment. Oh, for praise God. Thank you, first of all, for the honor of standing here. Um, now, it's always good to be home. It's Amen. you two just totally bless my heart, Barbara and the sister. Uh, I'm going to try not to be a crybaby. Okay. <laughs> But it's always, always awesome to come here because, like Barbara said, it's, you come and you feel home, no matter, you know. And uh, I, I was with Claudette. Then when they came last night, tidying up for the service. So I had the privilege of coming in here and doing little things, but walking around just praying and thanking God for the house and laying hands on your chair and... Lady, lady, lady Rhonda's chair. Yeah, yeah, the anointing is here. God is good. Uh, I want to encourage the body of Christ. Stand behind the man of God that God has put over you. I. Wow. I just know. That the calling that you hit, and you know from my Texas to you, mm. um, I am yeah. so honored to see you answer the call. And in answering that call, you counted the cost. And I, my, my desire anywhere I go is to come under the leadership of who God puts me under and be a part of that church. People I know is not easy. We can be so busy doing everything else in our, in our life. But the, the church needs people to be committed to doing the little things, man, the little things. And, you know, I, I, I read a quote once that said, humility is not thinking of yourself less. It's 
thinking less of yourself. Because everything that we want in life, and we know what we've gone through in the last almost two years now, we'll be in another year soon. Um, but everything that we desire and want in life, we go after. We'll put our energy into it. We can be as tired as we want to be. And you can be as tired as you want to be when you go home, but you want to eat. So, like I said to Pastor, you know, the meals that are being served spiritually, man, you can't eat on Sunday and go all week without eating. You come in on Wednesday, we need to see the house just as full on Wednesday as we do on Sunday. Because we got to get through a whole week. <laughs> and if you ain't doing it daily, I don't even know how you're getting from Sunday to Wednesday. But I, I just want to en encourage the body. The word of God is the key. And he never said you were going to understand everything you read. But put yourself in it. So that the word gets in you. So when the man of God, the, the worship team that comes here to minister in music, because that is powerful. For many years, people sat and said, oh, it's okay if I don't get there for the praise and worship, I go for the word. Um, I'm standing here to say to you, if you believe that, then you're missing the mark because the worship gets you ready for the word. And it, it changes your focus on yourself onto God. So, Pastor, all I can say is thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And to the body of Christ, when you feel like it's hard to submit and be committed, don't, don't look to man, look to God. And ask God what he wants you to do. Because God wants the body of Christ to be united together. That's how we win. We got to stay united. It doesn't matter if I'm in this house here or in Ottawa. Is that the body of Christ has got to be united to love one another. We already know that we're going to rub shoulders and we ain't going to think all the same. and all. But those are little things that should be set aside when it comes to this word. So I, I just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of standing here and sharing. And just know that you're loved and always prayed for. I, I just, you know, I keep connected. I keep connected. I, I messaged Lady Rhonda and uh, found out she's coming home tomorrow, but I'm leaving on Wednesday. So I'm, I'm hoping I can connect with her before, before I take off. But anyway, I, I'm honored. I'm honored to follow you, cover you in prayer, and to be a part of what God is doing in the earth right now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, sister. Bless the Lord. I want to, can you please just raise your right hands with me? Let's surrender. Father, we thank you today, oh Lord, for all that we've witnessed and experienced. And our hearts are open. Our minds are clear. We're ready to receive even more right now before we leave this place. Holy Spirit, come now, make your abode with us. Move in amongst the chairs and the seats of touch those who are here and those who are willing to receive. We know that you are a way maker. We know that you will uh, uh, deliver healing and peace and joy. So as, so as you touch each person here today, we thank you, Father, that needs are being met. Even now, needs are being met. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Bless this word in Jesus' name, amen. And one more thing, can you give the Lord a hand clap praise? I don't know if you know that he is deserving of a praise higher than anything in this world. A shout louder than the lies that the enemy is presenting to you today. That he is a chain breaker. He is a way maker. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. He is the redeemer. He is the prince of peace. He is the king of kings. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. 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 You know, many times in our lives, I'm not going to keep you long because we've had pe preachers in the house already, praise the Lord. And, you know, uh, this, what has happened this morning is an example of everything that is our heart. To have people who will rise up and be able to testify of the goodness of the Lord in their lives. No matter where they are living or what continent they are on, that we as the body are connected. And to see young people, you know, I was standing back there and I was watching this young man on drums. 
and watch, just watching him and say, think, saying, thank you, Father, that we have young people in the house that when they want to make music, they want to come to the house. How dare we shut them down? How dare we say no because we have a service all planned, but they are in the house. And as I'm sitting there, I'm seeing two more young kids laying on the floor. And the religious mind would come and say, why are those children laying on the floor in church? But I say, this is their daddy's house. And if you can't come in your daddy's house and lay in the living room and receive some good news, then you're, you don't have a daddy. So I'm not that guy that's going to shut that down. I believe in young people. And I believe that the church needs to get behind their young people. Where's, where's Pastor Brown? Come on in. Come back. Come on, right up here real quick. Downtown Pastor Brown. Now listen. I said it before and I'm saying it again. We need to make sure that we are standing and supporting our young people. This young man has a heart and a passion for young people. This young man has a heart... You know, there have been times we've talked and he's been down by the basketball court talking to kids and talking to his friends and things. So church, we need to get behind him. We need to get behind youth ministry. The growth that's about to happen in this church is going to be fueled by the energy of young people. So if the church shuts the door to young people, we are going to regress. We need to allow them to come and bring their energy and enthusiasm for the Lord and stand behind them. I'll say this again, not just in word and not just in deed, but we need to also put our money where our mouth is and support the things that young people need. Amen? God bless you. All right. Hallelujah. Now, I want to share some word with you real quick, and I want to get you, you know, Sister Hilda, God bless you. Sister Barb, bro uh, brother, I just call him brother. Thank you for those words of encouragement. What you witnessed was connections. What you saw there was connections. People who aren't always here but are connected. You know, before I came in to serve it this morning, I had a wonderful prayer, prayer with Pastor uh, Emmanuel Chitwell in Mal uh, uh, Malawi. And we were praying together. Different continent. Six hours ahead of me. But we were praying for the same purpose. That God would move in the midst of his people, but not just in the midst of his people, but he would touch the lost. So as things have escalated, listen church, as things have escalated, I want you to understand and know that we, this is not a time for us to sit back and be comfortable. This is not a time for us to sit back and be comfortable. God will use you in your situation and your circumstance. He will use you to minister peace, joy, healing, and the Word of God to people who may, going, may be going through their situation. Don't allow yourself to be selfish and only think about what I need or what can I get. And hey, listen, I'm going to burst the bubble. Many times people come to churches with the mindset of what can I get? Looking for people who look like they have so that they could drain it from them. So when we come into the house of God, let's come with the right attitudes. And if you didn't know and you need to know, I am the senior pastor. And just so you do know, Pastor Carlo, associate pastor, brother Mark, this, this man faithful, part of our pastoral team. So I want you to understand and know that what we are purposing to do is, is, is kingdom. It's not just about the local church, but as pastors, part of our role is to line up the local church. I may step on some toes. That's okay. That does not mean that I don't love you. It means I want us to all mature. Amen. So I want you to turn with me really quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 
in verse 14. Now, over the next little while, as I'm working on this series that I've been preaching on, I'm going to start, in most cases, with this particular passage of Scripture. And I want to encourage you, have your Bible with you, have a notepad, uh, your, your device, if you have your device, have your device with you. But what I am going to encourage you to do is be prepared to follow along. Can I ask a quick question before I continue? How many people, and I'll just talk about here at this church, when you first came to church, maybe you weren't familiar with getting around your Bible. Is there anybody like that? But now you find yourself getting around your Bible. See, this is what happens when the Word of God is being taught. And we encourage you to follow your Bible. Newsflash, pastors, we are not perfect. We don't know it all. So you need to follow along and just don't take my word or my opinion. So look at this passage of scripture. Now I want you to get this, everybody, start to get this. Because in light of everything that we're dealing with in this end time, you need to understand and know that if God is for you, who can be against you? He paid for your victory, even in this time. You know, I, I got this passage of scripture, and I realized whenever something that happens that comes up against me, tries to break me down, I don't allow it to block my blessing, to prevent me from, from being used by God to bless other people. It says this, now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. Where? In every place. You know what that means? That means don't matter where I am. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to sound like him. I'm going to represent him. So now, let me make this relevant for you today. We are dealing with things and seeing things that we have never seen. Uh, my son showed me yesterday, uh, we were out, we were driving um, to Fredericton, and my son showed me a, a video, a YouTube video. I'm not sure if he's still here. Nathan showed me a video. And on that video was a collage of things from different newscasts around the world. And they were showing a devastation, and I talked about it last week, pestilences. Devastation, destruction. And on this news flashes, they were put together from different countries and different continents. And they were showing of things and the devastation that has been taking place over this last little while. So, look, listen, wake up. We have been dealing with a pandemic. And on top of that pandemic, which is, by the way, connected to pestilences, on top of that, we have seen earthquakes and floods in places th that are not custom to getting floods. And one of the news flashes showed the flood that had took place in Germany not long ago, and they went into one of the shop owners, and, and the water had been up to the knees. They had not seen anything like that. There was a news flash from China where, where the, the uh, subway, uh, people were in the sub, subway on trains, and the water was coming up to chest level. Then we were talking about fires in Russia, fires in California, fires in BC. We are seeing things on top of things. And we talked about that last week about pestilence, destruction, and devastation. And one thing we, we know now is that in the end times, not only will things escalate, but they will intensify. And time spans will be shorter. I'm not telling you this to make you afraid of things. I'm telling you this so you could wake up and realize that we are in the end times. And the church must not be afraid, but we must be faithful. So uh, the word of God is going to open up for you if you pay attention. So... Today I want to start, come on, go over with me to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk 2, verse 2 is the verse I want to focus on. 
No, you will have your time to preach too. My grandson. Bless the Lord. All right, so listen. The verse I want to look at here is going to be found in verse 2, but we're going to go back. We're going to read verse 1, but we're going to read all the way down to about verse 4, maybe 5. Just, just to set the stage. I'm not, I'm not teaching about Habakkuk, but there's something interesting when we keep this all in context. That when we read this, we're going to understand and we s get a deeper understanding of the time of Habakkuk. We'll understand that a lot of what he was experiencing is g kind of what we're dealing with right now. Newsflash, just love it. I want you to understand something. Though we are seeing things that we have never seen in our lifetime, it's not new to God. It's not new to God. And so if, if you know that somebody already knows how to deal with what you haven't, you don't know how to deal with, wouldn't you go to that person and say, I know you've been through this before. Can you help me through it now? Well, guess what? He's been through it before. He knows how to deal with it. So why as believers do we get bent out of shape? Here's, here's your position in this time right now is we should be worshiping. We should be surrendering ourselves before God. Trusting him like never before. Look at it. I'll start in verse 1. I will stand upon my watch. And I will and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Every man and woman of God today. All of us who are called into the offices. This is us. Get before the Lord. Hear from God. He may bring us a word that may cause me to, 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 uh, 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 to, to change, to grow. It may not be comfortable. But if God brings a word to us, men and women of God, then we must bring that word to the body. And I think uh, Sister Barb said it today. She said, don't, don't change it. Don't water it down. The times of coming to church for a, a good sounding word, it's over. I need a word that's going to sustain me. I need a word that's going to, here's a good one, that's going to challenge me. You see, so when God spoke to Habakkuk, he told him some things to do so that they would be able to deal with the times that they live in. It's not different than right now. Verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write a vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it. Now, why am I taking you here today? Because I inquire of God. I said, God, we need answers today. And here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He says, go back to your vision. Go back to the vision that I gave you for this ministry. He said, review your vision, make it plain and make it clear. Because everything that's in the vision is exactly what we've been doing. Word in Action Ministries International. We have been reaching out internationally. In our vision, it says that we will help establish networks of ministries. We have started our Bible school. So if you go to your vision, your vision will keep you focused and on, on track in terms of of what you're going through right now. See, Habakkuk was in that situation, but Habakkuk was, he, he was a little distressed because he wanted to see God move in the midst of the people, in the midst of all the chaos, the, the sinfulness, the uh, 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 people turning away from God. And he wanted God to move. And so this was the answer. Let me say it again. And write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that hears it. So here's the other thing about a vision. You cannot buy a vision. I'm not talking about going down and getting your eyes tested. You cannot buy a vision. A vision must be caught. It cannot be caught if it is not taught or revealed. If I do not reveal the vision, you will not hear it. And if you do not hear it, you cannot catch it. And if you cannot catch it, you will run in many different places. So your vision will settle you down. I'm telling you this now because I'm about to expound on 
where we go, who we are in this time that we're in. So I would encourage many of you to please pay attention and stay, and, and stay tuned. Better than that, stay connected. Because you're going to need to know. Why? Because as local bodies start to, start to retune, what am I talking about retune? I'm talking about resetting and rebuilding. Because we've gone through something. Does anybody here feel sometimes like you're just getting worn out with it? That's that, you know what that means? That means we need a reset. We need a reset and reconnect so that you can be reestablished, so that you can run the race. Because if you run the race without knowing where you're going, you're just running around in a circle. But don't we need to get somewhere? So, over the next little while, we're going to be revisiting our vision. Pay attention, look for your notices, because we're going to have a service where we're going to talk about our vision. We're going to talk about all the things pertaining to us as a local church, how we function, how we operate, uh, what we believe fundamentally. We're going to talk about those things. Don't you want to know that? Why is that important? Because when you walk out that door, the world is going to hit you. And you need to know whose you are and who you are and in whom you were planted. See, so you see, it's not just enough for you to come to ABC Church or CDD Church or whatever church. You need to understand that I am a part of the church. And when we understand that, we take our position. Listen to me. Just because all these things are going on doesn't mean you have to bend or you have to break. It's important for you to know how do I navigate through all this stuff that's happening today? Because listen up, Mr. and Mrs. Believer, if you're here today and you are a believer, if you are a believer, if you are a believer, God has provision for you. If you are a believer, God has provision for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know what part of the thing? Yes, sir. Is that you're going to have to turn away from some other things. Now that's for somebody because he has told me to say that. You're going to have to cut some things off, and it may even mean some people. And, 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 yes. and you don't have to come back and explain yourself to those situations, circumstances, or even some people. You just have to cut that string so it can be reattached to your source. Listen to me, somebody's going to get that, you're going to do it today, and, it, and it's going to save your life. Because you may be in a situation leading you somewhere that's leading you off the cliff. Cut that string. But you're more concerned about what so-and-so is going to think about you, what they're going to say about me, but you're not more concerned about what your father's going to say to you when the day of judgment comes. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I place before you this day death and life. But those are not the two most important words. The most important word is choose. See, God will give you the information, but you're responsible for your choice. And guess what? We all have to answer to them. So the church needs to understand that though these things are going on, I am positioned for victory. Now, come on, somebody. If you were about to go in a fight, now listen, everybody knows that Mike Tyson has a, 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 a wicked punch. You're about to go fight Mike Tyson, but somebody comes up to you and says, you got this. Do exactly what I say. When I say, you win. See, what, well, you know what that is? That's information before the situation. That's information before the situation. You are in position to get information before your situation. Do what I say when I say it. So that means just because pressure's coming and it looks insurmountable, if you turn to me and trust me or faith me, I will tell you the intricacies that you must apply for your victory. Lots of times when pressure arises, we think, oh, God's not moving. Let me go over here and call 1-888-TELL-ME-STUFF-I-DON'T-KNOW. 
Saul tried it and lost his kingship. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I saw Satan fall from heaven like a flash. Why? Because he rebelled against God, and God's stance on rebellion is still the same. God doesn't change, right? So his attitude towards rebellion is still the same. Now I, I want you to go over to Matthew, please. Matthew chapter 13. I'm not going to rush this because I, I'm, I'm, I'm working towards something. Let me, let me tell you what, we'll go to chapter 13 and I'm going to tell you where we're going to go when we get there. You know, one of the things the Holy Spirit's been leading me to do right now is to help us line up. And it's not just about a local church, it's about the church. Well, let me tell you why, because the church needs information. And unfortunately, we have people in position that are not giving us spiritual information. They're occupying a position, but they're not serving the call. And when that happens, they're not bringing you information pertinent to the call. How can they if they're not answering the call? If you call me on my phone and somebody else answers, and you tell them information important to me, but they are not in contact with me, I'm not going to get that information. I'm not going to walk out what you purpose for me to do. That went to somebody else who doesn't even fill that position that they're called for. So the men and women who are called must get our information from the one who called us. And then that information is, is directed out to those who are assembled. See, listen, we got to understand, God has a plan. And the church needs to be informed of what to do right now. Unfortunately, the church as a whole looks like it's running around with its head cut off. Why? Because as a whole, if we look at it in terms of a fraction or a piece of a pie, we have more pieces not connected to Jesus than we do those who are. Why? Because the church has been too much influenced by the world. The church has been infiltrated. And the danger is that now that we're in the end times, the church don't even know how to stand in the end times. Because we've been too focused on trying to stand now and, and look like church. Because right now, the church, we're the shining light right now. In the book of Revelation, listen, I'll tell you this. What happens when the church is vacuumed out? When the church is vacuumed out, hope can be lost. So when the rapture happens, the church, the church is what's holding us up right now. So the church needs to be worshiping and praying. We need to fulfill our position right now. All right, Matthew chapter 13, I'm talking, y'all turned over there, let me get, let me get going. We're going to look at verse 42, but I'm going to start back just a little bit. All right, now, this is still standing in line and staying in tune with the times that we live in. How is the church supposed to navigate and behave during this time? Last week as I was preaching, I was setting you guys up. And I told you we're going to look at First Thessalonians. We're, we're going to get there uh, right after this. And then we're going to start to transition the teaching to start to try to open this up a little more for us. So we can make sense of everything. How many of you want to make sense of what's going on right now? See, because when you can make sense of it, you don't have to be, in, you don't have to be afraid. Fear comes when you enter into the unknown. Do you understand what I'm saying? Fear com it comes when you enter into the unknown. So I'm going to try and bring you some information. All right, so I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of reading. And this is amazing because I'm reading the Word of God. You know what's so important about this particular portion? Is we're going to hear Jesus. I got a red-letter Bible. And you know, if I just read what Jesus says and says, 
let's pray and go home, you had a good sermon. Because I'm reading the words of Jesus himself. Take nothing from it, add nothing to it. When the man speaks, y'all better listen. So, let me back up. All right, I'm going to start in... All right, let's, let's start in verse 33. No, let's start in, in, in verse 31. And I am going to read down to verse 42. So I'm going to give you some context here. I want to look at this and then we'll go, we'll go over to 1 Thessalonians. Starting in verse 31. Another parable he spoke. Another parable put, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took, and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Will the whole, uh, till the whole was leavened. See, you understand something here? You're getting this? What's a parable? First, what is a parable? Jesus taught with parables. What are parables? Th they're stories that he used that are examples of things that we are familiar with so that we could understand what he was talking. And so in other words, he took the mysteries of heaven, broke them down into a story, stories that relate to what we're doing right now. People eat, people plant. That's what they did. They cooked food. So Jesus was preaching and teaching and examples that we could I immediately apply to our lives. So one of the things he's showing us here is this. A little bit of sin, if you let it live long enough, will raise up and it could destroy the whole thing. So we've got to get sin out of our lives. Stay focused. I'm going to keep it in context because when we go into it and come into the end time, sin has to be accounted for. So we might, we've got to get busy now weeding it out and we weed it out with the word of God why because as the word of God is taught it cha you get a, a, a change of mind and when your mind gets changed you get a, a, a new set point and a new mindset and that set point now is from the sin nature into the God nature N and my my new mindset is I don't think like the world anymore I think like Jesus but you can't do that if you don't get the word and if you don't get the word, then that weed will continue to grow. You see, so when the word comes in, it will change your mind. I don't know if you're getting that. You see, somebody may be struggling with something right now and don't know how to get through it. But if you get the word of God, it'll, you, you will experience a mind change. You see, this is the CPU of the human body is the mind, not the brain, the mind, the unseen realm. When the information comes in, it gets processed and then it gets sent to the heart. And what's in a man's heart is what comes out of his mouth. And what comes out of his mouth is eventually how he will act. So if you want to change your behavior, change your thought process. Change your thought process by changing the words that you hear. Change from hearing the words of the world, world to hearing the word of God. Change your thoughts, change your words, change your actions. So if we want to act like Jesus, then we've got to take the words of Jesus and have the mind of Jesus. That's why that word repent means turn away from. So when I turn to the word, I'm turning away from the words that lead me astray. And I don't know about you, every enticement that has ever caused a person to wander away came by one or two, one of uh, uh, several ways. One, somebody was telling you information that caused you to think, oh, that will be good. Somebody showed you something through your eye gate that made you think, oh, if I only could. You hear me? Words and sight coming in. So you have to be able to change that portal. So when Jesus was talking, he was talking in a realm that people would be able to conceive and understand what he's teaching, and he taught very practically. Why? So that it could be applicable. So this is why he taught like this. So he goes on and he says in verse 30, 34, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not of them. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, 
I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. Then Jesus sent. Now, this is interesting. I got to make a note here myself. I always got to pull my, my, my pencil up because when I read the Bible, things jump out at me no matter how many times I read it. Look at what this one says in verse 36. And this is not something I'm going to teach on, but I just want to show you something, how it jumped out. It says, and Jesus sent the multitude away. You know what that means? Even Jesus said, okay, you guys, you got to go. Even Jesus said, okay, enough. Service has been going on, but right now, it's time to go. But then look what happened. Even though he sent the multitude away, look at what happened next. This is called the after-service service. service. <laughs> Anybody ever catch an after-service service? You know what happens at, at the after-service service? Things that didn't happen in the service before. And then Jesus entertained more questions. But now here's the thing that happened in the after-service service was that he got more intimate and went more in-depth. So sometimes when you're planning your Sunday or your Saturday or wherever you come to church, plan enough time so you don't have to rush out. There, there, there's that word, plan. You know what that means? I mean, don't wait until Friday is Friday or Saturday night to make arrangements for church on Sunday. Don't let the pressures of the world dictate your worship time. I love football too, but I don't know none of them guys on the field. They ain't going to pay my bills. I need an answer right now. So I got to schedule some time for the one who has the answer. So don't allow the pressures. I'm, hey, why I'm, I'm telling you this because we're in the end days and it's going to take worshipers to be, re, be re, real worshipers. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came in unto him saying, declare or explain or help me uh, understand uh, uh, the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth good seed is the son of man. And the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Now notice this is interesting. And here's what I'm getting to because at the end of the day, something's going to happen. Because at the end of the time, something's going to happen. There's going to be a big separation. There's going to be something that is going to cause a separation uh, of the tares in the seed and the weed. Sin from righteousness. You see, so if we pay attention, Jesus has given us an example and a little bit of insight into what's going to happen at the day of judgment. You still with me? Don't go to sleep yet. In verse 39, the the enemy, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. I mean, listen, hey, if you want, want to understand where all this stuff's coming from that's, a, that's coming against your life, understand God is not the one that's doing this stuff to you. There's an enemy, and Jesus points it out right now. And he said, the enemy sowed them. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Verse 40, as therefore the, tar the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Who are you? Who are you? A weed? Are you a weed? Verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth, his, send forth his angels, and they shall gather out, now watch this, gather out of his kingdom, out of his kingdom, notice it, out of his kingdom, all the things that offend and them that do iniquity. Now notice, let me go back to verse 41 here, and then I'm going to go over to, to 1 Thessalonians. Look at this again. The Son of Man, I'm identifying who? The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. So this is it. What I'm telling you is that at the end when we see all this stuff escalate, Jesus is in control. Don't allow the world to paint a, another picture. 
There's a time of reckoning that has to come. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity. Now look at, look at verse 42. And cast them into a furnace of fire. Now let me remind you, this is, we're in the book of Matthew. Jesus is still walking with his disciples. The, the end has not happened. Jesus is telling his disciples things that must happen. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Now check this out. Now listen to me, everybody. You can't say today that the pastor hasn't warned you. You cannot say the pastor has not told you. Here's the situation for many of the houses of God today is that we are preaching to each other. The, the, the people that need to hear this are not only the, 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 the goat and the wolves that come in amongst the flock. You, you hear me now? The goat and the wolves. I'm going to be teaching on that too because this is end time. Not only the goat and the wolves. See, because uh, Ter Terry, uh, Brother Terry's here. He's a farmer. Goat and sheep, they can hang around the same pasture, right? And they can eat the same grass, right? They're different, though. They're different. They have different character. See, so what, what I'm showing you here, what Jesus is showing you here, that he's going to cause separation out of his kingdom. So they may be gathered with us. They may meet every Sunday with us. But then there's another crowd of people that don't even come to church. Don't want to hear about Jesus. But you see, that day of reckoning is going to happen. Jesus is going to come. He's going to separate the tears. It's going to happen. Church, wake up. It's going to happen. Now, for those people who want to think that hell's not real, let me take you to the words of Jesus. And he says this, and he says, And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be, a, shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has, who has ears, let him hear. Now, I want you to come with me and go over to 1 Thessalonians, please, chapter 4. And uh, I'm, we're going to jump into this, start it, and, uh, and then we're going we're gonna to finish it and uh, come back in next week and get some more. My whole purpose in, do, in this teaching right now is to open your eyes of understanding so you understand and be aware of what's going on. There is something that I would like everybody to do, if you can over the next little while is just take a moment if you one day don't do it all the time and pay attention take a look and see of what's happening on the world stage take a look just just to take a quick look and see what's happening on the world stage you know what uh, yet on, on Saturday yesterday when I was watching the video clip that my son showed me the first thing that came to my mind was uh, uh, I, I grew up. I grew up in a church. I grew up in a Baptist church, wonderful church, and uh, the, the old Diggins used to always preach a sermon. And when I was young, oh, they're preaching that again. Oh, they preaching that again. And I remember that one sermon where the rocks are gonna look for a place to hide themselves. I'm like, oh, they're preaching that again. Well, you know, I used to do that, but here I am preaching that same sermon. And I remember when Deacon Gordon Cain was sick in hospital, I went in and I shook his hand. And I said, thank you for being faithful to continue to preach that sermon. So as I was watching the video clip, I went back to what he was preaching. The devastation of, of, of things. The, oh, man. And I'm watching it and I'm saying, these things are happening around the world. And my son says to me, he says, Dad, but people aren't aware because people aren't paying attention. Well, for a moment, I'm sharing information with you not to scare you, but to awake you. The church must be awakened so we can take our rightful place. So, back over here.
bless the Lord. All right, so I want you to, you're, I want to start in verse, verse 13. It's a very, 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 very familiar passage of scripture. We hear this scripture a lot. Um, most times we may hear this when we're doing funerals and that, but, and it's great, but we never really take time to, to get into what the meat of what the scripture is talking about. And I want to encourage you to never just read your Bible and then close your Bible. I want, you know, sometimes we live our lives so busy that we don't even give God a chance to respond to our request. And then we have the nerve to say, God's not answering my prayer. You know, and God's like, well, I was going to answer you, but you got up and ran away. I'm not McDonald's. Don't, don't treat me like fast food. So I'm not Tim Horton. So God, can I get a double-double blessing? And you get up the window and go. He said, wait in my presence. And now here's the pro- part of the problem is a lot of people don't know how to wait. I'm teaching you real good right now. How do you wait? Pray. Worship. Praise. And then do it again. Pray. Worship. Praise. And then do it again. Pray. Worship. Praise. Oh, um, come to church. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't think that that plays a part of the equation. I'm going to burst a couple of bubbles before I get into this. All right? But, but watch. It plays in the equation because there's an anointing for us as individuals. And then there's a corporate anointing. A corporate anointing is Matthew 18, 18 to 21 that says where two or more of you are gathered together in my name. In other words, in agreement, Jesus says, there I am in the midst of you. Problem. Many times in in churches all over the world today, people are gathering, but he's not there. He does not live in religion. He doesn't show up in tradition. Last time he did, he turned over tables. So that was his answer. Tradition and religion, another example of rebellion to what God, what Jesus himself, who is the blueprint for the church, established the church to be. So when we function outside of that, it doesn't please him. I'm going to burst another bubble because we become comfortable and conformed. And then we become complacent. Three C words. Comfortable, conformed, complacent. And each one of those things has the uh, uh, ability to kill the church, to kill the spiritual energy of the church. I did a sermon a little while ago, if you remember, what blocks the supernatural flow of God in the church? I'm going to give you three C words. Comfortable. I like my cushy, lazy boy chair right up front. Don't nobody better sit in my seat. Pastor better not preach something I don't like today. Oh, he preaching on that because I came because I was doing it last week. I don't know where you were. <laughs> if, if you're thinking that that's, be, that's, that, that, that's not called condemnation. That's conviction. And then complacent. Oh, I, I just want to sit back here. I just, I don't need to do anything. I'm, I'm good. I got all I need. I, I don't need to go out and help do any ministry. I'm, I'm just good to come to church. Wake up. You see, so the church needs to be awake, aware, and active. I just gave you three C words, and I just gave you three A words. Awake, aware, and active. They combat comfortable, complacent. And what was the last one? Are you paying attention? And what was it? They answer those three. Awake, aware, and active answers comfortable, conformed, and complacent. Did you get that? All right. Starting in verse 13. This is Paul preaching here, teaching. And he wrote this letter. Now listen, you know, when Paul wrote these letters, he wrote the letters. If you take some time, a lot of times we'll read through the New Testament and we'll read, we'll see Paul's writing a letter or we read it. But what we miss, listen, listen, keep, if we can keep things in context, Here's what context does. Context will open the Bible for you, and then context will make it relevant to you, and then context will keep it practical. This is why Paul had to write these letters. 
Because in the church of Thessalonica, they were going through some things that are similar to what the local churches are going through today. Paul had to write a letter to make them aware and awake so that they could pay attention to what's going on and not be given to falsivities that were also being taught. Are you still awake? Okay, thank you. But I would not have you to be ignorant. That, that, that sounds like a hard word, doesn't it? To call someone ignorant. Doesn't it? But yet Jesus uses it. Why does Jesus use it? Why does he use it? He uses it because it, it was that serious of a situation that he had to speak to you so that it, it could change your mind. So if we think about that word ignorant, what it really means is I would not have you void of knowledge in this particular context of which he's going to be teaching about, which is end times. See, when we don't have the right knowledge, we get lies, deception, and falsivities. And then if we follow those, we fall for them. So what would you rather have? The truth or someone's opinion over a situation? But I, would, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that them which are asleep. In other words, those who have passed on. Now, I'm not, I, I don't have time to go through the whole, whole thing. You have to stay tuned. Because we got to look at, because here's another question that the church needs to answer. And what I'm trying to do is there are so many questions that the people have that the church has not answered. One is, is, what happens to someone when they die? You you, you hear? So, so, So the church is not addressing these questions. The church isn't isn't addressing, what is sin? There's an, you know, how many of you ever heard someone talk about the seven deadly sins well you know what sin is sin and the wage of sin is death which means all sin is deadly so if I'm only going to choose seven then that means I want to be able to live in the other ones do you see how we buy into things this morning when I got up and I was praying the Holy Spirit said to me he said many people want the word of God to fit into their conformed lives. Because they don't want to go through the growing pains of the word of God fitting in you. Or or you fitting into the word of God. So we need the word of God to bring us truth. So before we can get to talk about what happens at the end and at judgment, we got to understand the process of how we get there. So, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about uh, the rapture, the tribulation, and judgment. Because people need to understand what's going to happen. Verse, it says, those which are asleep, or in other words, those who have gone on. Now remember, Paul is addressing this subject, and this is a subject that people need to understand to know, and, and and, and we need to understand and know today. So, very quickly, before, before Jesus came, before he, he ministered, before he was crucified, before he died, before he was buried, and before he ascended, all those who died in God before Jesus were at Abraham's bosom. In the book of Ephesians, it says that, how be it he who ascended first descended and took captivity captive. In other words, he took death captive. And from that moment, he cleared that holding cell. And I'm not talking about purgatory. I'm not talking, no. I'm talking about the reality of heaven and hell. And so those who died in God before Jesus came, when Jesus ascended, he first went and took them with him. And that's why he said to the thief on the cross this day, you will be with me in Paris. Why? Because the way had not been made for anybody else to get there. He had to come, defeat some things, go down, bring up, 
ascend and take the thief with him. So now, nobody's held anywhere else. So, so, so now we, we, we talk about the rapture. We got to talk about tribulation, pre-tribulation, and judgment. Church, pay attention because the signs are there. Last week I showed that Jesus himself said that these things must happen. For every season that we have been in, we have seen devastation. We're in summer, and we're seeing devastation happen in things that show up in the summer. It's hot, fires. It's dry, drought. So the church must be aware, ready, and able to pray. Listen up, everybody. Let me get your attention. Everybody, let's stop complaining, and let's start praying. I, 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 have, I have like friends who would gather at a moment to say, hey, let's watch the football game. Or let's do that thing you like to do. But how many will come up when you say, hey, bro, what's up at three? Can we get together and pray? That don't sound like man talk, does it? But that's real talk. See, my point here is because the hour approaches, we've got to start doing things that's pertinent in this hour. Okay, let me get back here because I want to finish it. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Now, watch. Watch this. Watch this. Right here. This is us. Everybody take a deep breath. Exhale. That means you're still alive. This is us. For this we say, to, say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive. Everyone breathe again. <sighs> say, that's me. But we are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Now stop. Now, you're here. There, there are two ways we're going to get to heaven. And both of these ways are in him. Nobody else. There is no other way. Don't listen to a lie. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else. You're either going to leave your earthly body and pass away into glory, or you're going to be raptured. This is not pi squared. It's, it's not a, a mathematical equation for this or that. This is not rocket science. This is truth. I may burst another bubble. This is not my truth. Enough of that. What's your truth? This is the truth. Don't, don't measure it to anything else because there's nothing else like it. I like somebody always says here, I know who you are. Keep it real. Well, this is as real as it gets. And it says, look, it says that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means you have not passed away and Jesus is coming back. And now we're going to talk about his coming because it's twofold. There's his coming to gather us and then there's his coming back to reign. Pay attention. <laughs> you need to be in the know. Why? Because you're his church. And that's why, that's why there are preachers and teachers like, like us right now. Because you need the truth. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You get that? That means because I'm alive don't mean that those who have already passed on 
that I'm going to, uh, you know, his coming back to rapture me is not going to stop them from being with him. And all those movies that people see on TV got nothing on what is about to happen. You can watch all the movies you want. You're not going to be prepared. Because The Walking Dead ain't got nothing on this. You sit and watch TV. Do you know when that day happens, someone may be about to be buried and going to jump up. You know on that day, someone could be out for a leisurely walk through a, a, an old graveyard. Now pay attention to what the Bible going to say. Pay attention. Believers, you don't have to be afraid. Why? Because we have hope and we have faith. Hope will give you an, an anticipation, but faith gives you an expectation. They're, they're, they're together, but hope is not faith. You hear me? Hope is not faith. Hope will give you an anticipation. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, and you work towards that. But faith says, it is going to happen. So we're not in fear because I got hope. So no matter what it looks like, I got hope. And here's the other thing about hope. Hope works in the realm of your senses. That's why I, I, I'm happy. But now hope is not faith. And faith is eternal. And that's where joy is. The joy, the joy doesn't play around in my emotions. When the wind blows, I may like you today because of what you said, and tomorrow you may say something I won't like you. That's my emotion. But God, Jesus himself said, I command you to love because that's eternal. You see, and that ain't playing around in my emotions. That's, that, that, that's forever established. So the church needs to be forever established. Are you guys still with me? I know what you're saying. I know you're saying, Pastor, hurry up and finish already. I got to be at the restaurant. Now look at it. So now let's get into this portion of it because I've already set the stage. For them that are asleep. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an angel, and with the trump of God. Stop. Sometimes you need to close your eyes and hear the word of God in 3D. Everything that TV may try to paint a picture of you about what an angel looked like, you ain't seen one yet. You, you're hearing me now, right? Every sound you think you have already heard, you ain't heard this yet. It says, with the voice of an archangel, archangel, higher angel. That means a voice that is higher, stronger than any other angel. And then with the trump of God, not like a trumpet you would hear on earth, because when you hear this trump, everybody will hear it, no matter what continent you are on. And it will have nothing to do with you hearing it at 9 o'clock in Canada, and then someone else hearing it eight hours later in another continent. We're all going to hear it because he's no respecter of time, because time answers him. He's the one that put time in place. He divided the darkness from the light, night and day. Time was instituted by him, so time doesn't control what he does. Now look at this. He says, with the trump of God, now here we go, here we go. And the, <laughs> and the dead in Christ shall rise first. No, 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 that's going to take me to another topic that i got to also include in this, and that's going to be talking about our resurrected bodies. See, did you know that there are some people out there that say they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe that he, his resurrection was, was whole? That his res they say some people believe that it was just his spirit that resurrected. They don't believe that there was a body resurrection too. But if that wasn't true, then why would he tell, tell Thomas, put your, put your finger uh, in the hole in my hand? And if the, his whole body didn't resurrect, then this book is not all true. <laughs> uh, come on now. Don't, don't fall for falsivities just because someone sounds good telling you that. Yep, you're right. Now, verse 17, and then... Now, somebody say then. 
All right, you know what that then means? That then is a qualifier and a justifier. It means something happened before this. So pay attention. Unless you have, uh, unless you have been raptured up already, you won't see this. If you're alive, and this happens right now, you will see this. And it says, then we which are alive and remain, we which are alive and remain, you know what that means? That means still here. Only two ways you're going to get there. I did, I, 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 I'm here, that means I didn't die. I'm here, that means I didn't get raptured. So that means those of us who are still here shall be caught up together with them where? That's the next area we're going to start talking about. See, when Jesus comes back to rapture the church, he doesn't come to the earth. The saints meet him in the clouds. Oh. Oh. You know what? You know what? Listen, I tell you. Listen, listen. When the, 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 okay, calm down. When the, <laughs> I'm talking about Jesus. I can't stay. I, when, 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 when we, my, my daughter says to me when I get like this, my daughter says, Dad. So I, I hear her voice right now. Dad, you're a 10. Bring it to two. So when the church is vacuumed out, what happens when, 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 when air is vacuumed out of a, 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 a bag or a balloon? Collapses. You know what that means? Everything, oh man, I got to talk about that too. It's everything that God instituted, kingdom law, civil law, moral law, is upheld by the breath of the church. I, I don't know if you're getting that. That balloon that we live in is upheld by the breath of the church. What happens? Kingdom law? Civil law and moral law, even scientific law, is removed. That balloon collapses. All those things that are being enforced by kingdom representatives that are being withheld are now, pay attention, going to be unleashed. Think about it. No kingdom law, which overrides all law. No civil law, which overrides how we live civilly. And no moral law, anything goes. You won't be here. And that's not even the worst of it. Th th this is pre-trib. Trib, bad. Say that again, brother. So we need to make sure that you have your reservation. Okay? Okay, let me finish here because I know you guys want to go. Look at it, it says, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now look at this. So look at this. We're not going up there to fly like birds. Just, just, just glide around. Don't, don't think you're going to go up there and glide around and show me how fast you can fly. Because if that were the talk of the day, we missing something. Here's why. To meet the Lord where? In the air. And now look at the next line. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see, church, you've got to understand and know that if we stand in our position until he comes, we will be with him forever. And somebody said to me one time, but pastor, I'm catching hell right now. I said, well, that's the closest thing you will ever see of hell if you are in Christ. And the closest thing an unsaved person will see of heaven is their relationship with us. That's why we are ambassadors of the kingdom. Someone need to get this and make it your reality. I am an ambassador of the kingdom. What does that mean? That means if you go and live in a third world country where the economy is not like what you're used to here in Canada, 
but you are an amb ambassador to Canada. They will have to put you up in something that represents living in Canada. I don't think you're getting that. There may not be one in running water, showers, flushing toilets, or anything, but if you are an ambassador to Canada, they have to make sure you have all those things where you are living. You are an ambassador to the kingdom. See, now, the next the par part in here that I have to get to before we get to the tribulation even is your identity in Christ. Am I teaching you good today? You don't have time to play around in the world to find, try to find, find out who you are in the world because the world will paint a picture of you that don't exist. Even to the point that the world has a picture of what a man should really, what, what, what they think a man should look like. If you don't have a nine pack, have a real deep voice, long stringy hair, and lots of muscle, you're not a real man. Come on now. That's the image. Every, every time they want to sell you a suit, that, that, that's how you got to look like. You ever watch a gym commercial and they show people who are going in the gym and work? How come they only show people after about two or three years of being in the gym? Why don't you show somebody that just started yesterday? <laughs> you know, because, because that person is not the one that's going to help them get the, the money that they need. So they paint a picture... So if I want to find out what the real image of a man is, I must look no further than Jesus. He don't have to go in a phone booth to change. He don't have to fly around with a cape. He don't need a fancy car or a sidekick. Now look at the end of this. Look at verse 13. And I want to point out a very important word here. In the midst of this, we're talking end times. But look at this word, the second word in verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Someone said, but pastor, ain't no comfort in this hand that people going to be cut off in the clouds and the dead going to rise and the, ain't no comfort. I said, that's because you don't have Jesus. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send you home, but I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Homework assignment, I hope you have a pen and paper. If you don't get it, don't call me asking me for it. I got it written here, but I'm not giving it to you. So if you want it, you have to call somebody else. But better than that, I want you to take it to supper. Most people here I can see, I see young people with phones. I see older people with phones. So you can make a note. Amen? Amen. Three things that are going to help us prepare for the end times. I should say four things. Number one, be faithful. How can you be faithful if you're not getting the word? There's no way that faith can come except by the word. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, when I got that passage of scripture, I took it this way for me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing of the word of God. The more the word I, I hear, the greater my faith increases. Now, on the other hand, <coughs> excuse me, on the other hand, the more of the words of the world that I hear, the more fear will come. Number two, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore, or in other words, always. Let me remind you, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now praise be unto God who always causes me to triumph. That word meaning victory. So if I know that no matter what my situation and circumstance is, that he has already paid for my victory, I'm going to rejoice evermore. You know what? And it won't make sense. See, faith will cause you to do something that doesn't make sense. Let me give you an example. You're driving down the road. You have a blowout on the side of the road. People say, oh, that poor lady. 
got to blow out on the side of the road. But yet, you out there saying, thank you, Jesus. That doesn't make sense, does it? But it will bring you your answer. It will bring you your help. You see, so faith counteracts what your physical flesh wants to say or do. Physical flesh, get out there and kick that tire, right? The tire is no good. Now what? You got a broken foot. Car not working and can't walk no farther. Who you going to blame? You see, faith will keep you positioned. Number three, pray without ceasing. Here's the key. This is what we need to do in the end times, church. I'm I'm, 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 going to play around and throw some darts at balloons, and I'm going to hit every balloon. First balloon, stop gossiping. Pray. Next balloon, stop murmuring and complaining. Pray. Third balloon, stop searching through the world for your answers. Pray. And number four, I like uh, number four, be thankful. Have a thankful heart in everything. And now remember this, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, has this been a blessing to you today? Thank you. And we're just, we're just hey, listen, you know, you know, we're just getting started. I could keep going. I feel like saying go get something to eat and meet back here at 2 o'clock. Uh, uh, because I, I feel I want to keep going. I, you know, I, I want anybody ever start a book and you want to get to the rest of the story? If somebody come up to you and say, man, I got to tell you something. Listen, yesterday someone came up to me and they gave me a whole big, I'll be right back. And you're standing there wondering, what they give you? But whatever it was, it was big. Who was it that gave it to you? When did this happen? You want to hear the rest of the story? I feel like I want to tell you it. But I want to, t- I want to tell it in bite-sized pieces. In bite-sized pieces. Why? Because you have to mature in this time. And the things that are about to happen that we're about to see, you shall not act like babes. What do babies do? When things scare them, they run, they hide. But we must be mature and stand your ground. Why? Because where you are is holy ground, and everything that God has given you is now kingdom territory. Relinquish none of it. You hearing me? And I'm not talking about your physical possessions. I'm talking about the spiritual environment. Don't give anything spiritually that God has given you. Don't step back. If he's increased you spiritually, don't step back. Don't regress to your former lifestyle. Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit's telling me to tell you this again before you go. There are some things in your life that you have to cut out. Some of these things are taking up your prayer time. I gave you four things, didn't I? Some of these things and even some of these people are preventing your prayer life. They're preventing, it's preventing you giving God praise. It's preventing or hindering your becoming faithful. So has this blessed you today? All right, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap, please, if this has been good to you. Hallelujah. For those who are watching, for those who are watching at home, Uh, We just ask you to um, like and share. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, For anybody here, if you have your seed with you today, um, if you have your seed, there's a couple of ways. If you want to, I'm going to play over your seed, pray over your seed. Um. I'm going to do this today because somebody had asked me one time, and they asked me, said, Pastor, do you tithe? Because sometimes people think that pastors don't, or maybe pastors shouldn't. Well, I don't, you know, I don't really pay attention to what they say. I have never met whoever they are. They have a lot to say. But for me, 
my offering and my tithing is my honoring God, and I'm not letting anybody interfere with that. So yes, I do. And not only do <coughs> not only do I tithe, but this ministry tithes. So there's a validity to sowing seed. I'm not going to preach on that today, but I'm going to tell you that God honors your giving. He absolutely does. So for those of you who are here today, if you have your, you have your seed, if you're sending in it by, by e-transfer, you could send it in to Word and Action at uh, bellalliant.com. But for everybody who may be watching and those who are home, I want you to just come in agreement with us who are sowing today. And if you were here and maybe you don't have anything, you're not in a position to sow, well, we're going to pray over you today that God would cause the increase in your life. Because here's what I believe. I believe that if God knows he can get it through you, he will get it to you. That he will use your life as a funnel. Now when God blesses you and you become rich in things, don't hold those things over your head. But allow those things to flow through you so God can bring even more to you. So he can flow even more through you and we can reach the nations. Amen. Father, I thank you today for those who are here today and those who are watching at home. I thank you, O oh God, for the seed that is being sown into this ministry. And by faith, Father, I thank you today for pressing it down, shaking it together, and causing it to run over. We thank you, O oh God, for the hundredfold return that you will give into us so that we will be able to give out, not, not even sparringly, but to be able to be a blessing in our communities, in our neighborhoods, on our streets. Father, I thank you today, O oh God, that there won't be an empty refrigerator, nor an empty cupboard, nor an empty wallet or bank account. I thank you, Father, today that as you bless your children, that we will be a blessing to the world, that we will help get Bibles in places that there may not be Bibles, that we'll be able to be a support for those who are ministering in different places, and that we will help build and maintain churches and feed orphanages. We thank you for this now, Father, in Jesus' name. We bless you, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as you leave, we do have the offering buckets and don't don't get up and go yet um sister loretta is going to come and make an announcement and just one second sister and also i want you to know that bible school is absolutely being prepared the binders are being printed this week for those who have already started anybody interested in signing up at bible school there's a sign up sheet you do not want to miss it and we have made it so it's feasible it's been designed so everybody will pass we're not here to crowd your head with just knowledge we're here to build you up, to mature you, so you can take your rightful place. We got a little preacher over here. Amen. We got a little preacher. Don't, don't shut the children down. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when, when, when the time comes to leave, I'm going to ask you, unless you want to come for prayer, if you, if you don't want to rush and leave, please wait and allow one of the ushers to direct your rows out. We want to make sure that people are leaving accordingly, so we're all not just rushing out. So uh, the ushers, uh, they'll be able to di direct you. Sister Loretta. And one more time. Did you get something out of this today? Yeah. Did you give the Lord a hand clap praise? Please con continue. Please continue. Please continue to keep me in prayer. Let me show you how this works while we're waiting on Loretta. The more time, the more time that I get to, to be in the presence of the Lord, the more I can hear from God to bring you that word. So when we learn how to relate to your pastor, guess what? Here's Christian maturity. You won't call your pastor for everything. You'll be able to call other people in the leadership, other people in the church, so that I can get on my knees on your behalf. It's called Christian maturity and how to relate to your pastor. Amen? God bless you. Good morning, or good afternoon, actually. Awesome word, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you for that. Praise you, Jesus. Um, I just have three announcements to make, and um, one of them is in regards to the youth. They're doing an outreach, and it's called uh, a community outreach, and they're looking for a backpack. Well, actually, this community outreach is going to be taking place over here on Caledonia Road, 95 Caledonia Road. The Plaza by Leonardo's, the convenience store. Anyone familiar with that area over there? Okay, that's going to be taking place on Saturday, 
August the 28th, between 3 and 5. 3 and 5, yep. And um, what they're going to be doing, they're going to be there, the youth or anyone that's willing to help with this um, also can be there. Um, they're, looking, they're going to be giving away backpacks. They're going to have a backpack giveaway and a free barbecue. So it's outreach to the community. And, then, and if anyone's interested in helping, we would love to have you there. And they're also looking for donations to put in these backpacks. So these are for the young people. They're going back to school in September. So we're going to be a blessing to them and help them out in that regard. And, and also, anyone available can come join us to pass out the school supplies to the community. The church has left the building. What's that mean? Are there shirts or something? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, I was just, is that? Okay, praise the Lord. That's what that means. I thought it went to shirt. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, yes, and also they're looking for backpack donations with supplies. You can drop them off here at the church on Wednesday between 6 and 7. Any donations, anything that would um, relate to school. And this is sponsored by Word in Action's Church Youth Ministry and the East Preston Daycare Family Resource Center. And um, also, we're having a men's breakfast. They're going to be having that arranged for September the 18th here in the house. Praise the Lord, here in the house. And more details will come. Okay, praise. Uh, okay, so we'll have more details next week. And hey, it sounds like we're going to be back to having our bulletins too, which is awesome. So you'll have this information to take with you. <laughs> praise the Lord. Well, that's what you mentioned. You said something about a bulletin. <laughs> so we'll be back for the bulletin. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Praise the Lord. So people have a reminder they can put it on their fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also having a women's breakfast. Uh, well, I shouldn't say women's breakfast, but women's ministry is going to be happening for us, the ladies, on September the 25th. So keep that date available. Praise the Lord. More details to come. We'll be in the bulletin. <laughs> it will be in the bulletin that's coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and also, please, remember to sign up for church next Sunday. And let's do this re register by Friday. Friday's the deadline. Six o'clock. Yeah, praise the Lord. We had a full house today. Awesome. Everybody came in the house and was... What's I'm not sure. When you go on there to register, does it, take, does it have a number and then it eliminates like or no? So we have 50 seats available. So when you go in, I guess will it reject if you're beyond if we're beyond 50 or we'll just Okay. Whatever. Just go on and register. And then they go by once they hit 50, then they'll reach out to you and let you know that if you were yeah, if you signed up early enough. Praise the Lord. So that's it. Let's enjoy the day. Oh, pastor has something else to say. One more thing to say. As I mentioned earlier about our vision and um, if you really want to understand how church is going and church growth, church planting, and I'm going to be teaching all these things, and I'm, uh, my heart has been to plant churches, to grow churches. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we're in the process now of helping establish churches in, in Kenya, in Malawi. Uh, we have churches now that have come under us in, in, in Kenya, in Malawi. We're also working for Mozambique, Tanzania, and Zimbabwe. So church growth, and I'm looking at us expanding even here locally and um, doing some other things in, in some of the other provinces. So one of the things that has been part of our vision was to establish networks of ministries. And one of the things that has been passionate on our heart for those who were here when we first started, if you were here when we were just in that little corner space, we used to always give out uh, food. That was something we did. We would have food, we'd have boxes, and we'd take it and deliver it. Then there was a time that me and Rhonda would drive around in our car and we'd take boxes of vegetables to people. So that has always been on our heart. But we've been wor wor working um, here and there's a couple here at the church that have been working with us and have just established an amazing network with Sobeys and the Superstore. And we are now going to be in position to do the thing that we started when we first started, 
and that is to be able to have a food bank uh, to be able to set up even here on a certain day of a week that people can come in and get food and then I, I, I will be taking stuff out to people so this is something that we used to do and we're starting to get back to it I'm saying this to say this there are no idle hands everybody's got something to do and that we are not we are a community focused church meaning we look for ways to enhance and improve our community physically and spiritually so it's going to take all of us we are having a, a Bible school here so we're also looking at how can we affect change in our community and I, I believe this any man and woman of God any any believing church has to stand up for what is socially not socially but stand up for justice now we have to also take time to define justice because we need to understand where do we as believers stand on justice. We just don't fall for everything that has justice attached to it. Number one, it, we have to first and foremost fall for, stand for kingdom justice. And that defines what things we need to align ourselves with. But these things help impact our community. I'm saying this to say, we have a sign up sheet out there. If you are here, you have able hands. If you're unable to use your hands or use your feet, you have a mouth, you have a brain, you have ears. Everybody has something to do. And there isn't any person here that's not equipped to do something. And God can help you become equipped. Please find your place so that we can help influence and impact our community. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you and God bless you and know that I love you too. Let's go church. Amen.